Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. So on the Facebook group today, I was reading about a guy who is breaking his high E string. Um, don't know if he was breaking the B or not, but this is going to apply to definitely if you have a problem tuning up your guitar and all of a sudden you snap that string for no apparent reason. Well, first of all, you do need to make sure you're using a tuner, tune up to pitch. Now if you're tuning up to pitch, and it's snapping and it just keeps happening to you you probably got a burr in the tuner itself and you're not sure where it is because you're feeling around and it's like i don't feel anything sharp well <clears throat> the thing is that burr can be hiding anywhere so you're going to need two things a round needle file and a piece of 2000 grit sandpaper okay now the burr could be anywhere, so what you want to do is you want to go in and because the holes are round, you have to use a round file. Otherwise, you're going to make a really bad mess. And you just want to hold it there with just light pressure, not very much, and just turn it inside the hole. So even a little itsy bitsy burr can snap a string. It is ridiculous how little it takes to break a string. And I actually had this problem on a brand new set of Grovers on my Les Paul. And uh, I was like, why is my E string breaking on me? It's like, this is stupid, right? So it actually happened to me too. And then I thought, well, none of the other strings are doing it, just my high E. So, hey, my luck of the draw, that's where that tuning peg ended up. So all I did was I took the the guitar, put it on the bench, didn't even take the tuner off the guitar because you don't need to. Okay, and I just stuck the needle file in there and just kept giving it a few turns here and there. Now, you're not enlarging the hole. This is why you're not putting pressure on. You're just just enough that you can hold it in there that it'll spin and you can go counterclockwise or clockwise. Okay, pick a direction. Don't go both ways. Okay, because then you will start enlarging the hole. But then you just want to do that a few times back and forth. Now, I don't know how well you're going to see this on camera, but it actually does pull some junk out of there. So, once you've done that, you definitely know you got the inside done and around those edges. Still, do we know if that cured the burr or not? Well, you can try putting another string on, but if it snaps again, it wasn't that inside area, but you want to make doubly sure that you got it because you don't know where it is. So now you want to take some 2000 grit sandpaper and you can cut this with a knife if you want to, which actually does make it a lot easier. And you just want to cut a narrow strip so that you're not too much wider than the cut that's in the peg itself. Just like so. That's it. So now you're going to want to wrap this around so that it looks like this. Okay. Now you want to get a little bit larger area here so that you can keep it together. And you want to pinch this together like so. And once you get it, you got it gripped like this. Okay. And then just back and forth, back and forth. So this you can go both ways with, and then you're going to see it coming off onto the paper, okay? So go ahead and do another little spot, and you want to you want to pinch reasonably tight once you get that sandpaper wrapped around there, because you've got to get it to stay put. Now, because these are plated tuners, you are going to remove a little bit of the finish off of here, obviously. It's not a big deal, and most of that is hidden anyways when you get the string on. And then besides, you still got the stuff on top. So by the time you get the string on, you're not going to really notice or care anyways. Well, I don't care as long as the darn thing works right and doesn't snap my strings anymore. 
because um, you could go out you could get another set of tuners or you know throw them on you might have you know the luck of the draw and get another one that does it on the, who knows right but so whether these are your stock tuners on the guitar or a set that you put on in my case my stock tuners were perfect on the guitar and I threw them actually onto uh, my SG so now it has Grover tuners but I put gold tuners onto my Les Paul and I ended up with one tuner that happened to just end up on that string and you know voila now if you're really concerned you could go through all the strings like all your tuning pegs but I would only be concerned about where if it's happening period and it's breaking up in here because that's that's likely where the culprit is is just on that string even if there's a burr like uh, on your D string that could snap that's possible because it's still a thinner string so you even go through your your E your B and your your G string uh, your D would be fine um, from a little teeny burr um, even your A and your your low E they would be fine from a little tiny burr it's always the thinnest strings that have no wraps on them, your E's and B's. Um, and of course, your G string, if you have G string that, you know, has no wrapping. Uh, so electrics or acoustics, acoustics would have wrapping. Electrics generally no. Um, and that's how you deburr it. It's, it's that simple and easy. So, you know, and you, you get a set of these files, you get a pack of 10. Uh, for like, you know, I got them for 10 bucks at the hardware store because, you know, I'm in Canada and we pay 10 bucks. In the States, you probably pay like 5 or $8 at Harbor Freight or somewhere. But uh, these files are actually really handy to have as a kit too because you also have a flat file in here, which is real handy. Uh, very fine teeth on it. Good if you're going to, you know, you want a cheap uh, solution for doing uh, fret edging. You know, to get away, get burrs out of the way or um, fret sprout. Because you do have an end on here that's, it's not really going to do anything. Um, this is actually smooth. There's actually no teeth on this side. But you could actually modify this file and just sand her down with some 320 or something until you're down to bare metal and smooth that out. And then smooth out the edges and then you got a perfect file for doing fret ends with. You know, so you don't need any specialized tools um, you just got to modify a couple of cheap files and away you go and they've got triangle files in here too uh, you could use the triangle file for doing the same thing just you know get two edges that you run them smooth so that they can't dig into your fretboard right tape off your fretboard and away you go go to town and get your fretwork done so that's how it's done and uh, the end result is you now have a repaired tuner and you shouldn't be breaking that E string anymore or your B or your G string, depending which ones are acting up on you. And uh, like I said, you don't even have to take the tuner off the guitar to do it. You can just leave it on there and uh, do the work that way like I did. And, you know, voila, problem solved. I have not had any string breakages since I fixed that tuner using this method. So it's obviously something that actually works and works great. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, look forward to doing more little techie videos for you here and there on guitar repair. Catch you in the next one.